All right. Looks like we are live. All right, welcome to Lambda School's online uh, JavaScript mini bootcamp. Uh, this will be fun. We got a lot of interest. A lot of people sign up. Uh, there's already a pretty active Slack community, so I'd encourage you to reach out to your peers and ask questions there, and it'll be a great, a great learning environment for all of you. All right, well, first things first, let me introduce myself. My name is Ben Nelson, and I will be your instructor for this uh, course. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, JavaScript fundamentals. We're going to start with variables and get into control flow and, and talk about data types and different things like that. Uh, then we're going to jump into loops and data structures, arrays, uh, objects, functions, prototype, uh, even getting into some more advanced stuff like uh, and like a closure and hoisting and different things like that that you would expect to see in, a, in an interview. So yeah, these are, uh, it, it's really cool. This is a great time to be learning JavaScript. It's, uh, right now, it's, it's uh, one of the most popular programming languages. It's used for everything from uh, programming drones to, uh, uh, you know, with hardware to mobile apps to web applications and uh, servers and anyway, lots of cool stuff you can do with it. Um, yeah, and so we'd like to ask you guys too to uh, love for you guys to uh, you know subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow us on Twitter and uh, yeah, just so you can stay up to date with our, our recent you know the, our most recent offerings. We're going to be doing uh, more free courses like this in the future. Let's see, oh yeah, so I uh, so I was studying computer science uh, was a few years ago and uh, a while ago. And uh, it was right when the first coding boot camps were starting. And I decided to uh, uh, take a semester off and go to a boot camp in uh, San Francisco. And um, anyway, I had a great experience and uh, got a job after it. Um, ended up not finishing my computer science degree and I uh, just went, you know, got right to work as a full stack software engineer. Uh, so I've been doing a uh, you know, full stack JavaScript development for several years now, and um, I've also been working as a uh, an instructor for a, a local coding boot camp. And uh, yeah, I was the lead instructor for for two years teaching there after our part time boot camp. So uh, yeah, online learning these uh, these resources can be great. You can learn a lot through them, and and uh, a lot of cool things you can do. So JavaScript. What is JavaScript? JavaScript is uh, it's uh, well, if you think of a website, if you think of like Wikipedia, imagine Wikipedia. It's uh, just a lot of text, and uh, you know maybe some pictures, and and uh, you know nothing too fancy functionality-wise. That's how websites used to be mostly. And uh, HTML is the the text. It's the blocks on the screen. If if you kind of think of a house, uh, any HTML is kind of like the raw materials, the wood and the brick and the the cement. And uh, CSS is a convenient way to style those elements. And so if you take the CSS, if you take the styling out, every single web page would look almost exactly the same. So like all the, all the buttons would look almost exactly the same. You know, browsers will render them a little bit differently, but uh, they would all look about the same. And so CSS adds kind of that styling. And so CSS makes your house look uh, unique. It's the paint. It's the... Um, you know, it's the decorations, it's the stuff that holds your house together in the, in the um, you know, according to the plan that you have. And then JavaScript is like the electricity in the house. It makes it so your refrigerator can work. It makes it so you can turn lights on, heating, um, you know, security system. It makes it so your garage door can open. It, um, you know, sprinklers or whatever, like, can run. And, and so JavaScript comes in and, and adds a lot of functionality to a web page. It makes it so... When a user pushes a button, you can write a bunch of logic. You can write out a bunch of code to determine what happens, uh, you know, when that button is pushed. You can, uh, anyway, you can start to do really powerful things with it. Um, a while ago, there were some some improvements that were made to JavaScript that significantly improved its speed. And when that happened, everyone started kind of going crazy with these uh, front end web applications that they could build. And so when I say a front end web application, think like Facebook as compared to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a little more static. It's just, you know, text and links and pictures mostly. But then you look at Facebook and there's 
things that you like and you scroll and they, like the infinite scroll and um, you know little animations occur when you click on things and react to things and uh, there's a lot going on and JavaScript controls all of that on the front end. Uh, due to JavaScript's rising popularity and then the fact that it was the, the main or the the only pretty much language you can use on the on the front end uh, you know lots of people were learning it lots of people were using it and so eventually they uh, you know, group of people, they, they created what's called Node, and Node essentially takes JavaScript and it, and it adds a few things to the language that makes it so that way it can function as a, as a server-side language. Uh, so, uh, you know, for those of you that, that, that you know, that don't care, don't worry about this information too much, but, but JavaScript, it's, it's essentially getting, uh, it's, it's a C++ program, so it gets it, all the different words and everything get, get interpreted by a, by a C++ program. And so they, they essentially went in and added a bunch of different keywords to it to make it so JavaScript can function as a server language. So what I mean by a server language is that's, it's a program that's running on a computer. It doesn't have a nice interface like a browser that you're interacting with. And uh, it's just uh, uh, some code that's running on a computer and it can save stuff to the computer and, and receive information and send it back to the, uh, the browser. But anyway, we go, in, uh, we go more in depth with uh, APIs in our, in our uh, free Python course. And, uh, and we, we'll, go in, we'll be going into it like crazy and building tons of APIs in our uh, upcoming paid full-time and part-time courses. So yeah, that's kind of what JavaScript is. It's, it's, it started out just as a web language, and then someone made it fast, and so people started making it more sophisticated on the, on you know, for web pages. And then, um, because everyone was using it for web pages, people started making ways to use it for servers. And then now you can use it for mobile phones. And uh, there's a lot of powerful things you can do with it. So yeah, with that being said, we're going to dive in. I'm going to do a screen share, and we're going to go over some of the, the fundamentals of the JavaScript language, so you can start to learn how to program with it. And and uh, yeah, start to go build cool things. All right, so let's share my screen. All right, the infinite mirror. Okay. Great, let's, uh, okay. We're gonna hop in here. Um, this is my scratch JS file. I'm gonna be writing some different, I'm gonna be writing some code in here. Um, Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do, and there, there's instructions to do this in the homework that we'll be releasing after this lesson. But, um, oh yeah, an important note that I want to make right now is uh, do not follow along with what I'm doing. Just just watch, observe, be a little sponge, absorb as much as you can, and then afterwards go through the homework and you can come back and reference the video and uh, use it as a way to, uh, you know, kind of review the concepts that you, that you know that you don't understand. So. Don't go download an editor right now. Don't go download anything. Don't try to keep up with all the code that I'm writing. So I'm going to be writing stuff and then deleting it. So just just watch, and then you have plenty of code to write later. So I'm using Sublime. This is just a, a text editor. It's a place where I can type in my code and it saves it onto the computer. Yeah. So something you're going to be doing, and the, and the homework is going to talk about this is. Uh, you're going to have to download Node, and what Node does is Node allows you to uh, run your JavaScript locally on our computer. And so we have a link for the downloads, but you'll just go there, you'll download it on your computer, and then uh, and then what that will do is that will make it so that way you, using terminal or command line, you can run your JavaScript code, and I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do all that. So, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up terminal real quick. You're going to see lots of kind of crazy stuff flashing up. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. So terminal, uh, I'm just going to do a quick overview of this. This is essentially like it's your computer without the fancy user interface. So you can type in different commands in here, hit enter, and then they anyway, they do lots of different things. There's, there's tons of different things you can do. You can uh, write different uh, you know, pieces of code that you can run in terminal to, to do stuff to your computer. Um, a lot of viruses that you get come because they're, they're programs, they're little scripts that you download because you think it's like a JPEG, but it's actually a, you know, it has a .exe on the end of it or something, and then it's a, a piece of code that runs on your computer and messes everything up. So, yeah, so terminal, it's just a way to, to navigate around on your computer. And so 
there's, you know, because your computer is just a whole bunch of different files and folders with different documents and programs and stuff that are in all, all of those folders. So right now I'm in this, uh, I'm in the Lambda folder, which has a JS mini bootcamp folder inside of it. And there's a first lesson folder inside of that. And then there's the lecture folder inside of that one. And so this kind of shows the path to where I'm at. And so I can type in LS. If you're on Windows, you type in DIR. Um, that doesn't work on Mac. But uh, yeah, type LS, and that shows the contents of the folder that I'm in. So I see that I have a notes file and then a scratch.js file. And so I can use the keyword CD and then go dot dot, and that takes me up a level. I type in LS and see what's there. So I see there's the homework folder, there's the lecture folder. So now I'm going to jump back into the uh, jump back into the uh, lecture folder. Sorry. Jump back in there, hit LS. Great. Okay. Let me zoom this up real quick. All right. Terminal zooms kind of funny. All right. So okay. So here's where I am. All right. So those are those are the contents of my folder. And then now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be typing in some JavaScript code inside of scratch.js, and then I can run it here because I have Node installed. So once you install Node on your computer, then you can type in the word Node inside of terminal or command prompt, and then it will uh, follow by the file name, and it will run it. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. So all right. So we're going to jump here into scratch.js. So the very first thing that you need to learn you know, with this programming language is uh, you need to learn what a variable is. So a programming language is just a, it's a set of instructions that we're ultimately giving to the computer. And so when we're writing those instructions, there's a, we have different values. Like you have different uh, pieces of text, or you have numbers, or uh, all these different types of values that you manipulate and pass around and, and, and do stuff with. And so when we're writing code, it's executed from top to bottom, line by line, and then we something that you're doing very often is you're creating variables and you're holding all of these different values. And then you know I'm going to teach you about these different things that allow you to manipulate the data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go var name equals Ben. That's my name, semicolon. Okay. So this is how you declare a variable, and this is how you assign a value to it. So in JavaScript, you use this keyword var. So you type in var, and then you hit space, and you type in the name. That's the name of your variable. So this is the name that you're going to use elsewhere to, to reference uh, the value. And when you say var, that's telling the computer. It's saying uh, you know, the, the name, the, the, the text, the characters that come after it, that is going to be the name of the variable that I want to use. So we have var, name, and then we do an equal sign. And the equal sign means assignment. And so it, we're saying create the variable name and then give it the value ben. And we put it in quotes like this. I put it in single quotes. You can use double quotes or single quotes, um, but I encourage you to use single quotes. And then I finish the, the sentence with a semicolon. And that it uh, tells the computer that this uh, this phrase is done. That's kind of the, the ending statement. In JavaScript, if you leave the semicolon off, um, it doesn't really cause many issues. But in other languages, everything totally breaks. Um, but it's best practice to use the semicolon. So all right. So now uh, I'm going to introduce what's called console.log. And this is just a statement that you just memorize initially. And what this does is it allows you to print out a variable so you can read it. And you'll be using this for debugging. And this will make a little more sense in just a moment. So I'm going to pass a name to it. Log is what's called a method. And console is an object. Again, we'll be going more, uh, more in depth with that. Just for right now, the important thing is that I put name in here. And then I'm going to see it pop up in the terminal. So now I'm going to open up terminal. So I'm going to jump back over. All right, so now I'm going to run scratch.js by typing in the keyword node. And this works because I've installed node. If you haven't installed node yet, this won't work. And then I type in the name of the file. I hit enter, and boom, we see that the word Ben printed out to the console. And that printed out because of this.
So you have to make sure that you have both quote marks. So if I leave one off, I, I mean, it's right here. It's warning me. It's saying, hey, this is weird. But if I jump back over and try to run it, then I'm going to see an error. And so unexpected token, illegal. And it's, you know, and it's trying to tell me. It's saying, hey, something's funky right here. I can look at it and think, oh, okay, I forgot my, you know, forgot my uh, uh, quote mark. So I'll go and put that back on. You know, or maybe I forgot my equal sign. And then I'll come back in here, run it, and boom, it says like, oh, unexpected string. It's saying like a string shouldn't be here. I'll explain what a string is in a moment. But anyway, and so it'll kind of give you some hints. And originally, and initially these will be kind of cryptic, but over time they'll make more sense. Okay. So this is our first value that we're printing out. So we have our name equals Ben. And let's go our favorite number. I don't know. I'll just say 15. Okay. And so here's another statement. So favorite number, that's a variable name that now holds a number. So this one up here that has text in it that we wrap in quotes, we call this a string. So in, in programming languages, we, we call that a string. So name is set to the string Ben. Favorite number is set to the number 15. So let's print out print out that number. Okay, so now I'm going to hop back over and run it again. Okay, I'm going to see Ben and 15 print out. Cool. So this is the basic pattern for declaring variables. We're going to be doing lots and lots and lots and lots of that. You're going to be declaring lots of variables. So again, we use one equal sign to make that assignment. We say, uh, yeah, that it's that it's an assignment. Okay, um, all right, so the next value is we call these, uh, we call this a, a bool. And uh, um, the guy's name was, uh, I think it was George Bool. Um, I'll have to look, maybe look that up. Anyway, he was a, a mathematician that invest, invented uh, Boolean logic. And uh, anyway, it, essentially computers, it's you know it's electricity that's you know that's ultimately uh, like your code is ultimately getting translated down and down and down and down until it's uh, becoming ones and zeros or it's becoming like on and off electrical pulses. It's, that's a very 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 uh, dumbed down explanation of it, but just like a high high level view, um, all of programming is built off of uh, Boolean logic, which means that with ones and zeros, uh, you can you can build out and and, and develop a um, you know, number systems and, and you know, and more more complex systems. So binary, if you've seen like all the ones and zeros. So something that we can do in JavaScript, another very common type is, uh, yeah, it's called a boolean. And let me show you what that looks like. So let's go var uh, likes pizza. Also, that equal to true. So all right. Um, yeah, so likes pizza. Anyway, so uh, we said that equal to, yeah, so it's true. So it's text. Like, it looks kind of like text, kind of like the string, but we don't put semicolons around it, and it has to be all lowercase. And you see the editor turned it purple because it's like a special keyword. And so um, you, the opposite to it is it could be false. So if I didn't like pizza, this could also be false. And so those are two common values that are used, like so true and false, and you. Um, We'll use those values to store different different attributes of, you know, what people like and and, and things like that. So, um, or you know, different uh, different states of your program. So, like for example, um, I, let's see, some some code that I was you know that I was writing the other day. Um, you know, I was writing to there's a, there's a value that's that's next to each uh, you know to each user in it, and it says if the user has. Uh, um, if the user has uh, uh, has a valid email, and then it it can be set to either false or true, and so that's like a common value that you'll uh, that you'll use for these kind of uh, binary binary systems that like these binary values that can you know be one or the other, and so there, there's actually a lot of different values where um, it's a very very commonly used uh, data type. So, all right. So these are the these are the three main data types that we're going to be going over: just uh, numbers, strings, and then bools, boolean values. All right. So then now we're going to jump into 
Well, okay, so now we're gonna kind of play around with these a little bit. So, all right, now let's do something that's actually kind of, uh, you know, maybe we can do something that's a little more like meaningful. So let's uh, make a little math problem. So let's say that we have var um, age, we'll set it equal to 30. Okay, so we'll say this guy's age is 30. And then now what we want to do is we want to increase his age. So let's make his age, um, let's set it equal, uh, like let's make it 40. So then what we can do is go age is equal to age plus 40. What we're doing is we're saying age, we're going to reassign it, and we're going to make it the original age, which is 30, and then we're going to add, well, 40 is not what we want to do, 10, I mean. So we're going to add 10 to it, and then this age will now be... Jump back over and run it. 40. Okay. So anyway, that's now the, the new value that age has. And so this is an addition sign. Uh, if, if you do addition with two numbers, then it, uh, um, what it, anyway, what it does is, uh, anyway, addition sign with two numbers, it just adds them together like you'd expect. So if I broke it down like this, age equals 30 plus 10. Jump back over and run it does the same thing, 40. So that's what addition does. Try to do subtraction, 30 minus 10, which of course is 20. So uh, anyway, those behave about the same way. Uh, like it's just, you know, very simple. Just you put them between two numbers. So uh, we also have division, which is just a slash. So 30 divided by 10. Come back in and run it. Three, three. All right, and then we can do multiplication, which is uh, shift eight or the that asterisk. That's uh, that's how you do multiplication. So let's go thirty times ten. That's three hundred. So if we come back in here again, the way this works is we say var variable. So we're saying we're going to create a variable, and then we say the name of the variable. And then we do an assignment sign. And then on the right, we can put an expression, or we can have some some work that needs to be done, or we can just have a you know a static value. We can either have just you know thirty, or we can have you know times ten, you know plus five divided by four, or whatever. And you know we'd see what you know with the order of operations how it computes that. But so you can have some different work that has to be done here, and then this will all be done simplified down to a single value. So, like for example, if we did, um, I don't know, what that, but so if we did this where we it was thirty times ten plus fifteen, so it would go thirty times ten, so that would become three hundred, and then it would add, well, and then it would add five, and so then this would become three hundred and five, and then it assigns that to age, so age is now the number three hundred and five, and then age gets passed in down here to this log method, and then that logs it to the console so we can view it. So five. Of course, I just assign it randomly like that. But that's what's happening at runtime is is the uh, it's going the computer's going line by line and it's solving all the little problems that you put in and running all the different the different commands that you that you type out. Okay, so that's how that's how math works. Uh, there, there's another uh, interesting operator that we want to cover. So so far we've covered plus, we've covered minus. Uh, we've covered multiply, we've covered divide. Uh, there's another important one that we need to cover, and it's uh, called a modulus, or modulo. <laughs> uh, well, what this does is it this gets the remainder of your division. So if I go var remainder, and then let's set this to, um, let's go 20 modulo 7. So what this is going to do is it's going to try to divide 20 by 7, 20 over 7, and it's going to get the remainder. And then whatever the remainder is, it's going to, you know, whatever the remainder is from, from performing this division, that's the value that gets assigned to the remainder. So it's it's not what divides in, it's it's the actual remainder. So if we come in now and, well, that's not going to work because i got to in there, jump back into terminal. Remainder is six. So 
because you know seven, fourteen, and then there's and then there's six. So twenty minus fourteen is six. So if we did division, take that to division, pop back over and run it again. Now you see the actual you know division value two point eight five. You know, and it goes on and and uh, gives you a bigger value with all the decimals on it. So. All right, um, an important thing to note for those of you with a programming background, uh, the language, uh, JavaScript is not uh, strictly typed, and so you just use var for everything. Whereas in other languages, you have to specify this is a number, this is a string, or this is a bool. Uh, right now, like or within JavaScript, you can just put var and it can be everything. Okay, uh, people are asking how I represent negative numbers. So let's do a... Uh, Negative, and then you actually just you just put a minus sign in front of it. So, so I'm just go and print that out. Negative one hundred. Um, so if I do negative one hundred plus one hundred. I'll head back over. Zero. Okay. So. Yeah, that's how negative numbers work, addition, multiplication, division. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to go over is, all right, string. Uh, all right, so we're going to dive into strings a little more now. So let's go um, first name. We'll set this to Ben. And we'll go last name, set this to... Nelson. Okay, so my name is Ben Nelson. So what we can do here is we can actually use the plus sign to do uh, it's what's called string concatenation, or it, it adds the strings together. It connects them. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I go var full name, set that equal to first name plus last name. What this is doing, again, is we say var, so we're creating a variable, we have the name, first name, we assign it the string Ben, semicolon. Var last name, we assign it to the string Nelson, semicolon. And then we say var full name is, we assign, we assign the variable full name, first name, plus last name. So the computer's going to figure out the right side of that equal sign, and then whatever this comes out to, it then goes and sticks it where, um, as full name. It's the value that full name references. And then let's print out full name down here. So let's go to terminal, open up, run, boom, Ben Nelson. So it combined the strings. So when you do a plus sign between two strings, it, it just adds them together. And that's called string concatenation. So now let's put a space in there so we can make that uh, look a little better. And so I'm going to do another string. It's just a just a space. There's nothing in it. And so now as I go back over and run this, we see it's the string Ben, and then plus the space, plus another string in Nelson. All right. So yeah, string concatenation. So add strings together just like that to combine them. Uh, you'll have a problem like that in your homework. All right. So now let's go over. All right. So there's another math object. So there's these things called global objects, and right here is one of them. It's called console, and it's an object that's available everywhere. And an object is just like it's a variable name that has some different, uh, they're called methods or different properties that are attached to them. So um, anyway, so console has this log method on it, and I can pass full name to it, and it prints it out. There's another one. There's another global object called math. And so I'm just going to go over a couple of the basic, um, just some of the really basic uh, methods that it has on this math object. And so one of them is uh, pow for power. And so you specify the base, and then you specify the, um, the exponent to the second value. So essentially, this is like writing, you know, two, and then like putting the little three up in the top right. That's that's essentially what this is doing right here. So that's how you um, you know square something or cube something. So this is two cubed, and so uh, I'm gonna call it two cubed. All right, and then let's uh, we'll console log that out. So I'm gonna run back over into the terminal. Boom. So eight. Okay. 
Okay. So another one is uh, uh, we're going to go math.round. This is like this one, like one of the main ones that you use. So if I put 5.5 in here, rounded value, and now let's jump back over into terminal. See that it rounded it up to 6. If I go 5.45, I'm going to jump back over. 5, so it rounds it down. Okay, and so remove that decimal spot. So you can also say math.seal, like sealing. And then what this does is even, so instead of rounding it down to five, it is going to round it up to six. This is saying, if, um, I'm saying always round up. So 5.001, come to terminal, run it, and it rounds up to six. Okay, uh, the other one, is math.floor. So math.floor, and then we pass in 5.001, jump over to terminal, and it's five. Okay, and so if we you know, make this nine and nine, um, and then do run the script again, um, you see that it uh, rounded it down. So that is math.floor. Those are the, uh, I think those are the only ones that you'll need uh, to know for tonight's, uh, tonight's homework. So. Okay, so we have, um, okay, so those are, yeah, basics of strings. Uh, oh yeah, one, one other thing actually real quick that I wanna do is uh, let's do var greeting is assigned to, or as the value hello world. Okay, so now uh, let's go actually uh, greeting length. So we're going to see how many characters are in the string hello world. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put in, uh, there's a value or, or a property that's on every single string that you create that's called length. And so when you create a variable and assign a string to it, that variable now has a length property on it. And you can call that and that tells you how many characters are in the string. So it's going to count up each individual character in there, including the spaces, and it's going to give you a number back. So let's go print that out and see what it uh, comes out to. So run again. Oh, scratch up. Yes, 12. Okay. So as you see down here. So yeah. All right. So 12. Um, there's 12 characters in that Hello World string. All right. Okay. So let's say now that instead of just like, our program running two or three lines of code and doing one math problem, we want it to do um, you know, a bunch of different things. So there's another type of value, like that's the way to think of it. There's another kind of a value in JavaScript and it references a whole block of code or a, uh, or a list of instructions. So those are called functions. So you write those by using the function keyword. So just like up above when we say var, you have the word function, and then we pass them in, and then we give it a name, and we're gonna call this say hi. And so function names should be a, like kind of like an action. So like say hi. Uh, Boolean values should be a statement that could be true or false. So likes pizza, you know, or, um, yeah, just yeah. Likes pizza, can drive, uh, has valid email. Uh, those are all true or false statements, and so those are what you'd give those variable names uh, for a number. Um, or uh, anyway, you you know give it something that reflects that. And anyway, but we'll go into the rest of the naming conventions, uh, you know, with other values as we as we move on. So all right, so we have the function keyword. Let me give it a name, and then we pass in two parentheses. And then we pass in, and then we put two curly braces. So this right here defines a function. And in between the curly braces is where you write your code. And so um, let's put a space there. So, and I'll go over the parentheses, what those do in a minute. So right here, we have function say hi. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna console log, hello. So again, we're just going to call this console.log right there. 
and then down below it we're going to invoke say hi this is how you invoke it so say hi is the variable or the, the variable name function name you know just you can kind of kind of you know correlate those in your mind but all right so you have say hi and then say hi and then right after it we put open and close parentheses and that says we want to run the function we want to you know push the the run button on it and so it's going to go through um so the code as it's executing if you kind of look at my cursor let me zoom in a little more is the code going to come down and it's going to go line it's going to say okay here's a function defined and then it's going to keep going it's going to skip over everything that's in here and then when it gets down here to say hi it's going to say oh, okay say hi where was that and it goes and looks for it and it says okay here's say hi and then it sees that there's an open and closed parentheses so it's it knows okay i need to run say hi so then it hops back up here it runs whatever's in the function and then when it, the function's done, it hops back down to the end of this line, and then it keeps going on down the program. So say hi is just a it's, a, it's a block of code that we want to run, and then we wrap it in like a variable name, and then we can use that name later if it's like a piece of code that we want to run over and over and over. So for example, let's say like you're signing up on um, Facebook and you're putting in your password. And so that you type in your password and then you type it in again. And then behind the scenes, they have some code that's listening for your inputs. And when you're done typing, it's going to compare the two strings, you know, because those are both strings that you typed in, and it's going to make sure they're the same. And if it's they're the same, it'll display a little green check mark or whatever. If they're not, then it'll display a big red error message. And that function that's comparing those two strings is going to run over and over and over and over and over again. Every single time you make a change to the to one of the strings, that function is going to get called again. And so it's this reusable little packet of code that can be run over and over and over and over and over again. And so it makes it so your code can be very uh, reusable and neat and organized and tidy. So that's generally what um, that's generally what a function is. So so if you kind of remember it, so console, uh, anyway, is an object that has a function attached to it. And so we go console.log. And so this is kind of like a function passing in a string to it. We'll go over arguments in just a minute. All right, so we'll call say hi. Now let's jump over to the terminal, see what happens. Run it. Hello. Hello, prints out. All right. Try this. I'm going to type in the word hi right there. Okay, now think for a second. What's going to run first? Is hi going to run first or is hello going to run first? Think about that second. Is hi, are you going to see hi or are you going to see hello? Come back in the terminal. Hi, hello. Come back in here. It's because the code, it sees the function. It doesn't run it yet. And it kind of saves it for later. And it comes down and it sees this. Oh, okay, so print out hi to the console. And again, console.log is just something that it's in all the browsers, it's everywhere. It's just um, it's just a little statement in there that lets you print things out uh, to the developer console and, uh, and print it out so that way you can see it. Not on the screen like an HTML or CSS, but, but actually down in like the, the coding console. And I'll, I'll show you what that is in the browser in a little bit. Yeah, console.log hi, and then it runs. So it runs this, prints out hi, and then it comes here to say hi. Or jumps back up to the top, does the say hi function, runs console.log hello. And then the program ends because there's nothing beyond this, beyond line date. Okay. So that's kind of the, the general uh, that's generally that's that's kind of how, how functions work. So there's there's a few, there's two other aspects that we need to go over with a function. And so one is arguments. So with a function, because we can uh, call it later we don't have to call it right away we can you know we can call it multiple times so we can you know call five times let's hop back over to terminal see it print it out five times one two three four five print them all out so now what we can do is let's uh, you can pass in arguments because maybe each time we invoke it maybe we want it to say hello to um a different person so let's say, let's pass in 
Um, so this first one, I'll pass in Ben, and I'll kind of explain how this works out in a second. Austin, Ryan, Young, Mike. OK, so there's some of my friends. Then, OK, and then up in here, what we'll do is we'll say name. And then, OK, I'm not going to do this in line. I'm just uh, making sure that I'm arranging this a little more, more simply to, so it's a little easier to follow. So let's do uh, greeting is equal to hello. And we'll concatenate the name on it. And I'll walk through this in just a moment. OK. All right. So let's, I'm going to go print it out so you see the result. And I'll come back in and we'll walk through it. So I'm running it. And hello, Ben. Hello, Austin. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Young. Hello, Mike. All right. So here's what's happening. So when we define a function, so you can kind of ignore this part in here. When we define this function, we can say, uh, we can specify these uh, parameters. And what these are is these are values that can be passed into the function every time it is every time it is called, every time it is invoked. So with say hi, we say that we're expecting them to pass in a value, and we're going to reference that by using the word name. And so down in here, we can, we're creating a new variable called greeting, and we're setting it equal to the string hello with a space. And then we're concatenating it with the name argument that comes in, the name parameter here that's, that's defined here. So this name matches up here. So now, as our program is running, it's going to come down. It's going to see function say hi. It's going to skip over it. It's going to just. It's going to remember this name for later. And it's going to come down, come down. It's going to see okay seven on line seven. It says say hi. So it says okay. So it goes and grabs the function. And then it's going to call it, and it's going to take whatever you put between these parentheses, and it's going to pass that in as an argument. So, Ben, we're just declaring it in line. I could also do this. I could say bar name one is equal to Ben, and I could pass it in like that. Those are both doing the exact same thing. So, in this instance, uh, we have the string Ben. We're assigning it to the variable name one. We pass in name one here in between these parentheses. And so with the say hi, it invokes the say hi function. Name one is what this is. So name right here, this the first time this function runs, name is equal to Ben. Then it comes down, and then it creates the greeting variable. It creates uh, this string hello, and then it adds on name, which the first time it runs is Ben. And then that whole greeting, that whole big string that it just created, gets put in here, and that gets printed out to the console. So then that's done, and it comes down to here. And so, it, um, so then you know this finishes up, comes down to this line eight, say hi, grab say hi again, and it passes in the string Austin. So Austin comes in. So name now references the string Austin. Greeting is. Uh, hello plus Austin, and then it prints out hello Austin. The function finishes, comes down to line nine, say hi, grabs the function, passes in Ryan as the string, name is Ryan. Greeting becomes hello plus Ryan. Greeting is then passed to here. Greeting is then printed out to the console. So if you look at it, log is actually a, it's, it's, it's a function. And I mean, we call them we call them methods when they're attached to objects. And we'll go over objects and arrays later. Like not not today, but in um, in, a, in another class. But yeah, so log is going to print out. Uh, it it prints out whatever argument you pass to it. And so we're passing in greeting, which is this full string right here. So we pass in that string to greeting, and then it prints it out to the console. So log is a function. So just like down here, we're saying say hi and passing in a variable. Right here, log is it's a function. The variable and um, log doesn't work by itself though you have to put you have to put console in front of it if you just did this it doesn't work so you have to do console dot log and then again that's because console is an object and we're going to go over objects later okay so that's kind of the basics of functions there's one more concept that we're going to work on and then uh, and then that's 
pretty much it for all of the new material. And then I'm just going to walk you through how to run the tests and how to do the homework. So let's, so I'm going to change all this. I'm going to delete this all now. I'm going to call this function, call uh, add to numbers. So I use a function keyword that tells the computer I'm creating a function here. I go add two numbers, and then I uh, uh, do the parentheses, the curly braces, and then, OK, so this is like the basic function. This is a, a working function. It doesn't do anything, but this is this is the base function declaration. So now we come in here, and I'm going to have two numbers that are passed in. So if we want multiple arguments passed into a function, we uh, we use a comma to separate them. So we have x, comma, space, y. So these are the two arguments that can be passed in. So now let's, you know, just to start out, we'll console log the two numbers, and we can go x, comma, y. We can pass in multiple numbers. Console to the log function. And down here, we're going to invoke it. So you have add two numbers. Let's go uh, two and three. So again, where you call the function, we pass in two and three. So at runtime, when it you know when the computer gets down to line five, it's going to grab the add two numbers function. It's going to pass in two, so x will be two, and y will be three. It's going to come down here and it's going to pass in x and y to the log function. So let's come down to terminal, run it two and three. So now what we're going to do is. Let's say with our function, we, we get this value, and we don't want to just print it into the console, but we want to get it back and go do something else with it in our code. And so what we're going to do there is we're going to use a, a return statement. So you type in return. Return is one of those just built-in words in the JavaScript language. And it says, whatever comes after me and before the semicolon is what I'm going to uh, give back. So when, the, when, my, when this function is called, this is the value that's going to return. And so we're going to return, well, just, I'm going to go var sum and set that equal to x plus y. And down here, we're going to go return sum. The sum, again, is the, is the it's you're taking x and y, adding them together, returning it. So now, Let's um, go for our value. And OK, so this is a very, very common, uh, this is a very common thing that you'll see when you're programming. And so you'll have a very, uh, so to be declaring a variable, so you'll say value, and then you're going to set it equal to the result of this function. So here's what the computer does when it sees this. So line one, add two numbers, it skips over it, it remembers that for later. Comes down here and says, okay, we're making a new variable. Var, what's the name of the variable? Value. What is value equal to? And like what what is what what value am I going to assign to that variable? And then it's going to run this function. So it's going to go here and it's going to grab this variable name. Come back up here, grab the function that it remembers from before, and then it's going to go two and three. Then it passes in so x is two, y is three. So two and three down here. So when it creates this variable, so the computer, when, when it runs this function, it's going to come down to line two, and it's going to say bar sum gets x plus y. So two plus three. So sum is now five. And then return sum, which is five. So this ends up simplifying down to five when it's all done. We write it like this. But when the code is running, this value is going to simplify down. It's going to boil down to just the number 5. And then 5 gets assigned to value. So now let's uh, spin that out. OK, so that's quite a bit if you don't have much background with JavaScript for some of you. Uh, you know, this is a lot of review and a lot of, you know, basic stuff. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, just a, just a lot of the basic um, basic flow of a, of a programming language. And so with our homework, you're going to have all these pre-built functions 
they're going to be named and they're going to have these different arguments that are coming in and then you are going to uh, write the code in the function so that's what your job is your job is to write this and make this work and there's instructions for what each function should do so we'll go through and, and walk through a couple of those problems in just a minute but all right um so last thing real quick that i want to cover um oh yeah so anything that you any variables that you declare inside of this function can't be seen outside of it so if i go down here and and uh if i tried to console log sum i it wouldn't work because the sum variable only lives inside of this function. And so uh, variables live inside of the functions that they're declared in. And you can kind of think of all this code as being inside of one giant function. But anyway, you can have functions inside of functions. And the variables, they're, they live inside of the function that they're in. They never leave it. You can return a value, but the actual name sum and that variable doesn't leave. Just the five that the sum represents leaves the function. Add two numbers leaves it and goes here. But the actual name sum doesn't. Like, and so this, this right here doesn't work. Okay. All right. Um, I feel like there's one more thing I need to go over. Um, OK. All right. Last thing that we're going to cover. So again, this is quite a bit, but that's the great thing about a video in recorded lecture format is you can go back and you can review this and ask people on the Slack channel and work through the homework and um, we're covering a lot in each of these lessons, but there's there's a lot for you to work on in between and uh, you know to help you uh, solidify your understanding. So now we're going to go over how to kind of uh, branch your branch your control flow. So let's I'm going to get rid of all of this. We're going to go function can drive and it's going to take a parameter age okay now what we're going to do is this is what we want to happen we're going to say um, var um, i can drive and uh, actually up above here i'm going to create a um, so i'll call this uh, my age and i'll set this equal to uh, 50 so var I can drive, and then what we'll do is we're going to set it to the result of um, at this function. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go. Uh, okay. So can drive. So all right. So declare a variable my age, assign it to the number fifty. We come down here, we pass in that variable to the can drive function, and then it's going to come up in here. And so now we're going to say if the person is older than 16, if the age is greater than six, or is 16 or older, then we uh, then we want to let them drive. If not, then uh, we don't want them to drive. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called an if statement here. And so an if is where we can do some kind of comparison or some kind of check to see what the value is, and then uh, and then we can uh, go from there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if the age is greater than or equal to, this means greater than or equal to 16. And true. Then down below, we can go turn false. Okay. All right, so what this is going to do is we pass in my age, which is 50, build up to can drive. So 50 comes in and says, if 50 is greater than or equals uh, greater than or equal to 16, then run this block of code. So if this statement is true, run this block of code. And so 50 is greater than or equal to 16. That's true. And so then it comes down here and it returns true. When inside of a function, whenever the function hits a return statement, the function stops in its tracks, it doesn't do any more, and it's all done, and it returns that value. So true gets returned to here. So I can drive is now equal to the value true. And then let's go console.log I can drive. All right, let's come back over and put it out. True. All right, so now let's uh, var he, uh, his age. We'll set it equal to 10. We'll go var he can drive. And we're going to call the can drive function. We're going to pass in his age. And let's console.log. He 
can drive. So let's see if he can drive now. And here, run it, false. So, uh, yeah, so if 10 comes in here, 10 greater than or equal 16. It's not true. So this block of code gets skipped. It doesn't run. And then the computer comes down here, and it says return false. That runs. The function's done. False is assigned to he can drive. He can drive is then printed out in the console. So, yeah, that is how if statements work. So we're not going to be doing a lot of crazy stuff with if statements. You're just going to need just like some basic, basic stuff like this. Um, some something else uh, just for like a quality, like when you're doing uh, these expressions in here. So you can do greater than or equal. Um, you can also do uh, comparison to see if things are exactly equal. And so to see if things are exactly equal. Uh, then we use a triple equal sign. So let's say there's this world where people can only drive if they're 16 years old. And so let's uh, come down. So var her age, I'll set that equal to 16. Var she can drive. And then can drive her age. Come out here. Console.log, she can drive. So now let's jump back in, run it. Okay, the false, false, true. Jump back in a terminal. So what's happening here is we're on this first one. So 50 comes, it gets passed in a can drive down here. So 50 is age. 50 equals 16. 50 does not equal 16. So it skips that, returns false. And 10, so his age is 10. 10 is 10 equal to 16. So 10 equals 16, false. So it skips that, and then, and then it runs this line, return false. So we come down here, 16. So her age is 16. Age is 16. 16 equal, equal, equals 16. That This becomes true. This statement simplifies to true. So this block runs. It hits a return statement. It returns true. The function quits and exits but without running anything else. It never hits this return false. And then the program finishes down here because it's there's no more uh, commands to execute. Great. So. That is the basics of how an if statement works. We're going to be using a lot of those. Uh, we're going to dive into some little more like else if and else and and some uh, you know more of the more some of the other control flow uh, things that are important. Uh, but anyway, this is the basics. This is what you need for today's homework. So uh, let's now go over what we need to do for uh, the homework. How you can get access to the to the um, homework. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So now let's go to. Okay. So all right, your homework is here on GitHub. Right now it's private, and I'm going to be making this public in just a moment, and I'll be posting the link in the general channel, and uh, we'll let you guys all see that. But it's going to go through, and uh, yeah, this is the instructions right here in the README. There's some code and some different tests in here. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on this. Uh, when you go to the link, you're going to click on this clone or download button. And then uh, what you can do is download zip. So open that up. Click on it. JS Minicamp. I'm going to put this on my desktop. So I should clean up my desktop. But OK. So anyway, so I have the folder here. It's on the desktop. And uh, now what I need to do is I need to go and navigate into it. So. Um, I'm going to go open up terminal, and I'm down in here, so I gotta I gotta jump back up a few levels. All right, so now I'm in the top, so ls, and you can see all those all these different things that I have on here. So I'm going to navigate into the desktop. I'm going to clear this out, so you can see I have like a bunch of screenshots and stuff that I've done, and uh, whatever. So okay, and then I see JS Minicamp Homework One Master. So I'm going to go CD, JS, Minicamp, and then use tab. Always be using tab to autocomplete. It helps you prevent typos, and it saves you a lot of time. So I'm going to come in there and clear this out. All right, great. So here's all the stuff. There's the readme that had the instructions in it, uh, the exercises.js file, which has the place where I'm going to code, and then tests is where the tests are that tests your code that you write. And so you don't need to touch anything in tests. You can look in there to get clues about what to do, but don't change anything in there. I don't change anything in package.json. You can look at it, but don't, don't change anything in there. Um, and then, yeah. So then we're going to do something called npm install. So there's some 
package, there's some code that the tests need to run. There's some third-party code. And so when I say npm install, npm gets put on your computer when you install Node. And so when I do npm install, this package.json has like a recipe on there. It has all the different ingredients that this application needs to run. So I do npm install. And then what's going to happen is the computer is going to go, and it's going to look at the package.json, and it's going to grab all the code out on the interwebs that it needs, and it's going to install it into a directory um, so that way the test can run. So you run that, and then um, have to kind of wait a minute. There's uh, there's quite a bit of stuff that has to download. But um, yeah, so we'll wait a second. Great. OK. So and it's showing all the different stuff that I had to download. So. Anyway, there's a bunch of stuff. It makes writing the tests really easy, but um, it does take a moment to install. So now I have this directory. This node modules folder was added. Don't go in there. Don't touch anything in there. All right. So then now what I can do is I can type in npm test. This is going to be the command you're going to run over and over and over again. I hit enter, and it's going to lint my code. I'll explain what that is in a second. It's going to run all these tests. And we see 25 failed. 25 failed tests. So there's 25 homework problems that you have to solve, and they're all broken right now. So you have to go in and write the code to make them work. So let's go through the first one. I'll show you what the code actually looks like. So let's go into Sublime Text. I'm going to hop over to my window. OK, so this is exercises. This is the exercises folder um, that, I, that I had open for my lecture. Um, so something you can do, you can either do it like open dots. And that'll open it up, and then you can uh, um, open the directory in Sublime. I have a thing set up, so I can just do that. All right. So exercise.js. All right, so we're going to multiply by 10. All right, and then so in here, one, two, one second. Uh, OK, all right, so then what we're going to do, OK, so we're going to solve this first problem. So. It says function multiply by 10. Don't mess with any of the actual function stuff. That is working. That is 100% correct. So don't touch anything up there. You're just going to write code in between the curly braces. There's 25 problems. Don't touch anything down in the bottom. It says module.exports, and it has all the function names and stuff. Don't touch any of that. Um, so you're just going to write code in between all the different functions on here. So multiply by 10. So return num after multiplying it by 10. So what we'll do is we'll go var product is equal to num times 10. Let's go return product. You can also just do like return uh, num times 10. That works too. But I'm just writing this out to be a little more explicit, a little easier to understand. Um, oh, yeah, and the, these two slashes, these are comments. So anything that comes after the two slashes is stuff that is not interpreted as code. It's just that's comment. You can write little notes in there. Yeah. So multiply by 10. It's going to take um, just whatever number gets passed in, and then multiply by 10, and then return it. So then we're going to come back here into terminal, and then I'm going to run the tests again. It's going to go through, and then boom, 24 failed, 1 passed. We come up here. And it says, should return argument after multiplying by 10. Great, so it worked. And so if we jump back into Sublime, it's, uh, yeah, so what happens is the tests, they take these functions, and it's going to call it anywhere from like two to five times, and it's going to pass in a bunch of uh, different variables to it. And so, yeah, it's just going to call it in different ways, and, and, the, and it's going to check to see if the function works. And so you're going to write code in all 25 of these uh, uh, 25 of these functions. All right. Okay, let me just. Uh, all right, okay. Um, Austin is feeding me information, questions from Slack, so that way I can uh, be sure to address them. All right. So you come down here. Great. Okay. So, all right, so that's how you get these tests to pass. So like subtract 5, let's come in here and let's say we're going to, all right, so we're going to go um, var difference is num minus 
55. Uh oh, so I made a mistake, but I didn't notice it. Now let's return the difference. Save it. Okay, so let's hop back into terminal. You know, everything should work now. It should be passing. So we run it. And we see 24 failed. What? There should be two that pass. And so what you can do is you can go up here. You can see, okay, so subtract five is failing. And then we can come up here, and it's going to give us a lot more um, individual details. And I'm zoomed in pretty far so you guys can see it, so it's a little tricky to navigate. But so you come to this test, and it says subtract five num, and it says should return the argument after subtract five. So it gives us a little more details about it. So I said it expected the value to be five, and it was using like equality. It was checking like equality. So it was expecting to get a five back. But instead, it got a negative 45. And so in the testing, it passed in a value, and it was expecting to get a 5 back, but instead it got a negative 45. So because this one is subtracting 5, what happened is it passed in a 10. So it passed in a 10, the test, it passed in a 10. It wanted to get a 5 back, but instead it got back a negative 45. So and that's the, that's the issue. So um, yeah, so... Anyway, so you can go in and we'll, you know, go back and look at our code and be like, oh, we did 55 instead. So we'll get rid of that. We'll save it, come back into our terminal, run the test again. And then, boom, two passed. So then you can scroll up and you can see that they're green now and they're passing. And so your goal is to get all the Xs to turn into green checkmarks. Okay, so one more thing that we're going to cover is it's also going to lint your code. So if you leave a semicolon off and save it and run it. It's going to lint it first and it's going to say error missing semicolon on 27. So it's going to say on line 11 and then it's column 27. So let's go to line 11 in our code. Go to line 11. Oh, okay, I'm missing a semicolon at the end. Semicolon, and I hit save. And I jump back into the terminal and then now it runs. Um, if I leave off the var keyword, I go difference is equal to num minus five, come back over, run, boom. Okay, so difference is not defined. Difference is not defined. And so it's it's saying that you know something's wrong with the difference word. We come in here. And because what happens is if it sees difference without the var keyword, it's it it thinks that difference was defined somewhere else. And so the computer goes and looks for it and doesn't find it anywhere, and it says it's not defined. But in reality, what happened is you forgot your var or keyword. So sometimes the error messages can be a little bit cryptic, but that's that's essentially the the gist of what's of what's going on. So all right, so these that's how you do the homework, and uh, yeah, we're gonna work uh, yeah, so work your way through it, and uh, um, yeah, it goes over some ch stuff with strings. You have to use some if statements. You have to use the math object on a couple things. Um, you may have to Google to look up some different things, but yeah. Anyway, so that is uh, that is the homework. All right. So real quick, let's. Um, okay. So uh, all right. Let's. I'm gonna go make the homework public and get that posted out so you guys can see that. Um, all right. So I'm gonna come into. Uh, go to settings real quick, and then let's uh, make this repository public. Make public. Uh, just make this repository public. Confirm password. Okay, great. So this is now public. It's now live. So I will now uh, grab the link, and then I'm gonna go put this in general. Um, all right, so just posted the uh, homework. All right, so then you'll see that there's a little bit of a delay. Okay, so all right, so some people uh, have some questions about our course that's coming. So 
here's uh, yeah, so here's kind of the layout. What we're doing with this this JavaScript course is we're covering all of the the fundamentals of the JavaScript language, and so we're going to start with uh, you know the stuff that we covered today, and then we're going to go over um, you know more advanced stuff with functions. We're going to go over prototypes, objects, arrays. Um, you know, we might we might even dive in a little bit to recursion and some stuff like that on the last day, and so. We're covering a, pr a pretty wide, you know, breadth of, of information here. Uh, these lectures will be recorded, so you can go back and, and reference them. We encourage you to do that. Um, and yeah. Oh, one other thing that about the homework. So I have this thing called Feynman writing prompts. And so what I want you to do is I want you to open up a file on your computer, and then I want you to take each of these things, so like variables, the word variable, the term, and I want you to describe it as perfectly as you can and as simply as you can. So like, you know, like to a 12 year old, it doesn't have to be to like a four year old, you have to, don't have to explain what a computer is, but just, um, you know, explain, uh, you know, in, in as much detail as you can what a variable is. And this helps you um, expose your the holes in your understanding. And then you can go in on Slack, ask people about it, ask me about it, or ask Austin about it, and then, you know, we can help you figure it out. So I want you to, to do that little exercise with each of these, uh, each of these topics. Okay, so this is the prerequisite to our... Um, to our, our premium uh, full-time and part-time classes that are coming up on April 10th, and then we have some others starting July 10th. And so in those classes, we go over uh, all front-end development. We do React and Redux on the client. We do uh, client-side testing and uh, mobile optimization to make the site look good on a, on a, on a phone or on a, on a tablet. And then afterward, uh, we go into server stuff, and so you'll build APIs, learn how to salt and hash and save passwords. We'll uh, go into how to, how to do sessions and login and all that stuff. Um, databases, relational databases, non-relational databases. Uh, we go into, after that, we go into mobile development, so you learn how to develop iOS apps and Android apps using React Native. React Native uses React, and so you'll be using React and Redux and JavaScript, what you've learned to uh, code out these, these apps. And it's, it's really powerful, React Native, because um, you're actually integrating with the native um, components and elements on, on, on Android and iOS devices. This is, it's actually what Facebook has built their mobile app in. So it's pretty cool. So with JavaScript, in our course, you'll learn how to do front-end development, back-end development, mobile development, and then we also have a, a small unit on machine learning. And so we cover some really like some basics with machine learning. We talk about uh, you'll play around with neural networks and how to train them and and uh, how to make some cool features in your applications. So once you finish that up, we have lots of project and portfolio development time where you'll work personally and in groups. And then we have uh, career support that we do after that. We, we help our students uh, uh, write resumes. We help them uh, with job search strategies. We help them uh, 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 practice technical interviews. We do a lot of technical interview practice. Uh, every single day, there will be uh, different coding challenges that will, that will uh, simulate the types of questions that you would be asked in a technical interview at companies like Google or Facebook or Twitter. And, yeah, and, and, and that support continues after the course. We also have some mentorship spots that will open up to students that they can apply for. So you can have the opportunity to stay on for a second cohort and uh, study an advanced curriculum, work on some different advanced projects and, and different things that, that we have for you. And then also you'll uh, work at uh, um, helping to, to uh, mentor and teach new students. Uh, not teach, but you'll be, you'll be mentoring them during their project period and helping them to, to answer questions. And that will help you review and solidify the information that you've learned over the previous three months. Uh, you'll always maintain access to, uh, um, at, least, at, least for a, um, at least for a year, you'll, you'll be able to have access to all the lecture videos and, and everything from the course uh, so you can continue to review it. Um, with the free mini boot camp that's going on right now, uh, you can, uh, uh, you'll, you'll always have access to these videos. Um, these eventually will be will be integrated as our uh, pre-course material for our uh, full-time and, and, uh, and part-time courses. So the full-time and part-time courses, they, uh, uh, so like the part-time course, it's uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for three hours in the evening, and then 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday. The full-time course is 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and that's five days, like Monday, Tuesday, this. Uh, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the full-time course goes over 800 hours of work. Uh, the part-time course uh, goes over 250 hours of, of class time. Um, honestly, the, the part-time class, uh, to the best of my knowledge, is, is the most advanced, intensive 
a part-time coding boot camp that, that there is. And then it's also online, so you can access it from anywhere. Uh, lectures are given live. Uh, class sizes are small, up to 10 people. We uh, uh, will we'll code and review and personally grade every single project that you work on. Uh, you'll get lots of individual attention from all the different instructors and mentors. And yeah, we just, uh, yeah, trying to make it a fantastic experience. We offer financing. So right now it's 4,000 for the part-time, 7,000 for the full-time. And then, uh, yeah, we break that down into uh, four different payments. And uh, anyway, prices will be going up for the next cohort and, uh, um, and even for the next one after that. So um, yeah, so let us know if you have any questions about the homework. Um, uh, we'd love to have you come and apply to, to our upcoming premium courses. And uh, yeah, just hope you can enjoy this. So if Once all the JavaScript stuff is finished, you can go and dive into our free Python class. All those videos are up on, on YouTube as well in, those home, in that homework, those homework assignments are posted. All right, thanks so much, glad to have you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.